What up guys, Jay here from TV Time with Jay, and I'm back once again with another review for you guys, and this time I'm here to review This Is Us Season 5, Episode 3, Changes. Now, as per usual with my episode reviews, I'll be recapping the events of the episode and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episode first, and then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below, because I will be going into spoiler territory. You have been warned. Okay, so, as the title of the episode implies... A lot of the big three are going through some major changes. Of course, Randall is, you know, on the search for a uh, brand new black therapist that can better relate to his issues more. Uh, Kevin and Madison are, uh, like, adjusting to each other and, you know, their upcoming journey through parenthood and their own personal worries through that, you know. Randall and Beth have to deal with raising teenagers and, um, you know, some of the troubles with that. So let's go ahead and talk about this piece by piece. Uh, first off, I have to say, uh, Dan Fogelman, your wife, the actress who plays Madison, is absolutely amazing. I would have never in a million years thought that annoying skinny girl that was in Kate's, you know, uh, was it fat support group, you know, overweight support group, uh, would have been such an amazing character. I thought she was kind of annoying and dumb and vapid, but it turns out she's really sweet and thoughtful and, you know, has her own issues. And obviously, you know, the reason she and Kate became friends is because she opened up to Kate about her bulimia and her eating disorder, so we knew a little bit about that before. But actually hearing her kind of confess this to Kevin because she didn't really feel comfortable, like, opening up about this part of her life uh, to Kevin because, you know, they're basically strangers. They barely uh, know each other, and, you know, now they're engaged and about to have kids together. So everything's happening so fast. And, you know, they have a really, really good heart-to-heart -heart where both of them open up about their insecurities, their problems, all the things they're afraid to pass on to their kids. Uh, Kevin talks about his addiction, how he moved from drinking, and now that he's sober, his new addiction has become, you know, working out. Not only because, you know, it's his you know, ripped-ass body is his currency as an actor, but also because, you know, working out reminds him of his happy memories that he had with his dad because that was one of the ways that he really did connect with his dad was working out and with sports and stuff like that. And, you know, once that football dream went out the window, he didn't really know what to do. And then acting came along. And, of course, you know, a part of be getting good roles as an actor was to be attractive, to be physically fit. So, of course, you know, he really built on that as well. So, he, even though he doesn't fully empathize with Madison in the same way, because obviously he doesn't have bulimia or body dysmorphia, he does understand kind of that same sort of struggle. And, you know, they bond in that way. And they're really starting to get to know each other. And I think they'll be able to form such a genuine like really solid you know relationship and love and I, I love what Kevin said he goes you know I had two of the most connected parents you would ever have met in your entire life and yet they still miss so much because they did miss a lot with their kids obviously you know it took you know Rebecca and Kate several decades before they really connected uh, Randall was silent about a lot of his microaggressions that he faced in life all throughout his life being a black boy raised by white people and with that kind of comes the thing with Tess where Tess unlike Randall because she was raised by Randall and Beth two strong outspoken parents she is actually able to fully express herself and you know stand up for herself when she, you know, goes up against these microaggressions and she's able to, you know, tell the teachers, you know what, you didn't listen to me when I asked you nicely, so I'm going to be more aggressive about it to get your attention. Screw yourself. Don't do that. Don't touch my hair. Respect me. Call me, but, well, 
by what I want to be called by. I am not a she, I am a they. Respect me. And I really like that. Honestly, I am 100% on Tessa's side here. Not trying to earn any woke point or anything like that. I just really like the fact that unlike Randall, who, you know, unfortunately because he was raised that way, um, and he didn't really feel comfortable like with actually talking this out, he had to kind of bottle all these issues and frustrations up, and he kept them inside up until the point where his like mental state felt like a pressure cooker, and he ended up having these severe panic attacks. Um, and we can see now kind of the results of all that buildup. It's really fucked him up mentally. But Tess, Tess has learned healthy expression, healthy ways to communicate. Like, sure, it was a bit aggressive and abrasive, but it was a way for her to actually vent her frustrations out. Like, yes, she could have talked to her parents. But what was that going to do, right? If her parents fight her battles all the time, she's not going to go anywhere. She learned to express herself, to step out there and be like, no, you're not going to treat me like this. And that's something that, honestly, I don't get why Beth wasn't on the same page as Randall here and was more proud. You know, maybe I don't fully get it because I'm not a parent, so I'm not going to backseat parent here, even though they are TV parents. I'm not going to backseat parent here, but personally, you know, if I was put in this situation and my kid did this, honestly, I'd probably share their video on my timeline and be like, you know what? Look what my kid did, man. This is the situation. I'm proud of them. I'm happy they did what they did. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, I like that part a lot. Uh, the Kate stuff, it was just kind of a setup. Nothing too big. Uh, they met the potential birth mother of uh, a kid who they could possibly be adopting. Um, I'm not entirely sure that's going to go through uh, because we did see who they eventually do adopt. And she looks a lot more Hispanic and that, you know, the mom there looks very, very white. Now, the dad could have been Hispanic and maybe that is the same kid. But you never know. I, I, I don't think this is the case and uh, they're going to end up having a setback. But eventually finding the kid that they do adopt, you know, later in life. So we'll see how that plays out. And then, of course, there's the huge plot point. So, in the beginning of the episode, we get introduced to this uh, Vietnamese grandfather and his granddaughter. And, uh, you know, they keep talking about, like, cooking and, like, who are you cooking for, Grandpa? Like, you know, uh, and then he, you know, he talks about it's for a lady and it's for her. And it's like, oh, it's her, so it's a girl. Is it the lady that's in all the pictures? You know, that's what she says at the end. And at the very end, we see the pictures, and the woman in the pictures is none other than Laurel, Randall's mother. So this could mean one of two things. Either, like, you know, Laurel got clean and remarried, and she is that little girl's grandmother. Or maybe, like very much like William, just later in life, they ended up getting together and they're in a relationship and uh, she might not be that little girl's grandmother biologically, but you know, she is, you know, in a relationship with that girl's grandfather. So it, it still counts in the same way. Uh, either way, that's really interesting. I would love to see, you know, does that mean Randall has other siblings out there, you know, uh, through his mother uh, it's a lot of different possibilities i cannot wait to see where this goes i hope they don't drag out this like laurel mystery for too long but i am definitely invested but uh, let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments down below as always don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it and if you like what i do here and you want to see more from me be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time i upload a new video i view this is us every single week when it comes out uh, and I really do appreciate all the love feedback and comments that I got on the premiere episode a lot of different you know opinions and angles on how they feel how people feel like they handled the you know start of their like you know coronavirus related season uh, I enjoyed discussing it with you guys so let's keep that going tell me all those thoughts and feels in the comments down below like I said I really appreciate it uh, it's been a lot of fun it feels really good to be able to talk about TV again especially with TV 
um, have being on the, you know, hiatus for such a long time with, you know, obviously coronavirus stopping production and all that. So it feels really good to be able to talk to people about TV. Um, obviously, this is what I do. This is what I live for. So uh, definitely hit me up in those comments. Leave this video a like. Let me know you enjoyed it. And in the outro card, I will leave linked my review of the This Is Us Season 5 premiere in case you missed that and want to check that out. And I'll also leave linked a video YouTube and serious algorithm things you might like, which I hope you do. But until next time, guys, I've been Jay from TV Time with Jay, and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next review. Until then, peace.